Hi all. First of all, I want you to be aware that going forward, I will have the Black Lives Matter card in my description and resources so you can support the movement. If you are unable to support it financially, there are loads of petitions and I will also link the playlist where any AdSense revenue is going to be donated. Today, I wanted to give a little update about books I've been loving recently, uh, some new purchases to me, and there's a gift included, a Goodreads alternative, and my little rebranding. If you've been here since the beginning, thank you. I kind of decided to throw away any of my previous expectations. I had a really hard time trying to figure out where I fit in this YouTube space, and now I've kind of just realized as long as I'm just enjoying the content that I make, it doesn't really matter who watches it, as long as I enjoy the process and the information I'm sharing, that's all I can do. But as for the name change, pretty much Paperbacks in Bloom was one of those things where I thought it was a cool, sweet sounding name. I'm not even like a florist, I'm, I don't garden, and it wasn't a good representation of the stories that I love to consume and a representation of who I am. So next, I'm going to tell you about a couple of books that I've read recently that I have just adored. And this book actually was the one that I'm like, I want to be able to tell people about it besides just on Twitter, where that's where you can find me most of the time, honestly. Um, but this has been one of my most anticipated releases of this year, and it is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Morano Garcia. After receiving a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin, begging for someone to save her from a mysterious doom, Naomi heads to High Place, a distant house in the Mexican countryside. She's not sure what she'll find. Her cousin's husband, a handsome Englishman, is a stranger and Naomi knows little about the region. So as I mentioned, this book was one of my most anticipated releases and somehow my pre-order came before the date, publication date. So I read it over the weekend and wow! Mariano Garcia takes the traditional gothic horror and spins it on its head. To me, this is a story about reclaiming back your own autonomy with a backdrop of a slightly dilapidated mansion and ghosts and noises. And she has done a brilliant job building the atmosphere. And honestly, throughout most of the story, I'm like, okay, this is kind of scary, but I'll be okay. But the last like 50 pages, I was like very creeped out. And I cannot wait to read more of what she writes because, wow, I've been screaming about this book for a while, wanting to read it. And then now that I have read it, I will continue to scream. This is on the seep level of books that I adore. There are loads of trigger warnings. I will link like three different trigger warning databases that I found for reading specifically down below and slightly related but in a different own voices spin is Yellow Jessamine by Caitlin Starling. It fits the bill for queer, horror, villainous women. I did enjoy it but this was a five star read. Yellow Jessamine was a three star read. And then next up is I finally read the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin and whew, wow. So if you have not heard the synopsis or little tidbit about the fifth season before, basically three terrible things happen in a day. Essen comes home to find that one of her children was murdered by her husband and her other one was kidnapped. Meanwhile, a mighty empire of this world has collapsed. And then to top it all off, a giant rift has been torn in the heart of the earth. So lots of giant things happening all at once. 
So I recognize I am super late to NK Jemison, and wow, her work is phenomenal. The first time I tried to read this book, I had a really hard time just being thrown into something and not really handed a lifeline until much later on. And just being able to sit with something where it's not gonna be resolved for you right away. If you have not read this book or you are intimidated by this book, I will give you the advice that I have found, I found before reading it. And that is at least try and make it to the 100 page mark and go from there. It really made such a difference. One of the things I really, I really enjoyed about this book is that Jemison actually makes you work for your reveals and kind of challenges you to just accept that you might not know what's going to go on and that you just have to follow it. It might not make sense to you immediately, but it is going to be tied up for you and your job will hit the floor. Another thing I have to say about this book is that if you're able to read along with the audiobook, it is so good. That made all the difference as well. And then the final book of books I really enjoyed recently is Ghost Squad by Clarabelle Ortega. For Lucelli Luna, ghosts are more than just the family business. Shortly before Halloween, Lucelli and her best friend Sid cast a spell that accidentally awaken malicious spirits wrecking havoc throughout St. Augustine. Together they must join forces with Sid's witch grandmother Babette and her tubby tabby chunk. So what I really enjoyed about this story is that it has such a strong focus on family and that not all families might look the same. I also just got really hooked into it and I I stayed up way later than necessary to read this book and to finish this book. This is another one that I listened to on audiobook as well and it was fantastic. And if you don't have access to it another way but you have Spotify, as of today, it is still on Spotify. The only thing about that is that it's on one time speed. You can't speed it up at all. It's just a thing that you have to accept if you're going to go that route. As for one recent purchase and one recent gift, I'm going to start with Catherine House. And basically it's about this very fancy kind of university where you have to give three years of your life, but everyone who comes out of Catherine House ends up being very high profile. It also means that they have no connection to the outside world. They're provided clothing. Uh, they can't even connect with their family unless they get enough points. So what has excited me about this book so far, I have read one chapter, is already the atmosphere of this is ridiculous. I, the sense of dread and that something why is going to happen and continue to happen it's already there there isn't like the establishing happy-go-lucky university shot it's like you're just thrown in this place you've accepted it um this is your life i wonder if this is a book that has been criticized a lot or is very polarizing it has a 3.17 on Goodreads and I know three stars is a solid rating but it just makes me wonder what is going to happen where people either just really hate it and leave it like two or one stars but regardless I am hooked. I had to like unwind a little bit after I read that chapter because wow, it was intense. The next book here was gifted to me by Quirky, Quirky Bibliophile. And I'm very excited about this book because Onyx Pages review, I stopped it before I got to spoilers, but just the way 
that she spoke about this book. I sort of imagine westerns as a very male dominated genre so to see that subverted is very much my And then last up we have my latest Goodreads alternative and that is the story graph. It kind of just exploded on Twitter and you have the ability to transfer your Goodreads list. Uh, mind you there is quite a backlog. You don't even necessarily have to have those books transferred over or if you don't mind waiting. It's not a problem because there's still a lot of really great aspects that you can check out. With the story graph they give you half and quarter stars. I like how it gives you graphs as their URL suggests uh, but I also like that it kind of pinpoints your reading style which I'll put up on the screen and then it has a different dynamic than Goodreads where Goodreads you have like the top reviewers like top librarian and all of that. With the story graph you can follow and interact with others by liking their reviews at this point, but they don't show you how many people you have following you or you're following. So it's not a competition and it's also in beta, so it can only improve upon itself and take in user recommendations. Thank you so much for watching my video and hope to see you next time.